Okay, now we're going to talk about similarity transformations. I know you've already looked at some transformations um, where you did rotations and symmetry, but uh, the types of sim uh, the types of transformation we're going to look at today are called similarity transformations, and the biggest one is a dilation. A dilation is a transformation where a figure has the same shape, but it has a different size. All the transformations that you've worked with in the past, the figures had the same shape and the same size. So kind of think of when you blow up a balloon and you've written on the balloon how um, whatever you've written expands. That's what a dilation is. There's two types of dilations. There's an enlargement where the image is bigger or larger than the original figure. And there's a reduction where the image is smaller than the original figure. Now how much bigger or smaller depends upon the scale factor and we use the kind of a cursive or a telesized K to represent scale factor. If your scale factor, or, sorry about that, the how big or small depends upon your scale factor, which is a um, italicized K is the figure that we use to represent that. So if your scale factor is greater than one, that is going to be an enlargement. If your scale factor is less than one but greater than zero, that is going to be a reduction. Now when we're talking about dilations and scale factors, there's some vocab that we need to use. And one is corresponding sides. And when you talk about corresponding sides, those are the same sides on both the original and the image. Corresponding sides in a dilation are proportional. Corresponding angles, same thing, same angles on the original and the image. And corresponding angles in a dilation are congruent. So sides are proportional, angles are congruent. So the uh, I've given you an example here of a triangle that's been reduced. So the original figure is transformed to an image. Now, one of the things I'm going to ask you to do is to write a similarity statement. And here is what that looks like. I'm going to write the triangle ABC is similar. And this little squiggly means similar. Just like an equal sign with the squiggly above means congruent, this means similar. So triangle ABC is similar to triangle and now I need to list my corresponding vertices in the same order. So the angle that corresponds to A is D so I would list D first. The uh, angle that, that corresponds to B is E so I would list E second and Lastly, I would list F because it corresponds with C. It's very important when you're writing a similarity statement that you list corresponding angles in the same order. Okay, now the rest of the dilation um, lesson is going to be done on GeoGebra, so that's going to be a different video. So if you want to open GeoGebra on your computer right now, Okay, we're going to investigate um, dilations by actually performing some dilations in GeoGebra. So I'm going to first draw a triangle and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to put a point here. I'm going to come down three, put a point, 
go over one, two, three, four, put another point, and then I have to go back to my original point to create a polygon. And you can change the color of your polygon. I'm going to make mine green. Now I put a text box on mine to show that this is my original shape. And what I would like to do is I would like to perform a dilation of this with a scale factor of two. And here's how you do that. First, let's go up here, grab a point, go down to zero, zero, which is the origin, and put a point there. Because unless I tell you differently, all of our dilations are going to be um, from the origin. So now I'm going to come up here where it says dilate from a point. If you don't get that, you can drop down, get, do the drop down menu and get dilate from a point. You click the figure that you want to dilate. You click your point of dilation, and then you enter your factor. Let's say we want to use a scale factor of 2 first. So hit OK. Now it's going to draw this figure with a scale factor of 2. So let's zoom out a little bit so you can see a little better. If you hold down the shift, it will help you um, move your stuff around as well. Okay, so what this actually means is, let's look at our original triangle. Um, if we go up here to distance or length, we can measure from here. Well, if I get the right thing, I can. Okay, I adjusted my screen a little bit there. If you click here and get the pull down and do distance or length, and then if you click on any two points, it'll give you the length between those. So this particular length is AB and from B over here, and they're going to call that C, is 4 and from A to C is 5 units. So I just performed a dilation by a factor of 2. That means I'm going to take 2 times each one of these side lengths. So 2 times 4, my new length of my image up here should be 8. And yes, it is. And this one, 2 times 3 is 6. So let's see if that's 6. And 2 times 5 is 10. So yep, that's 10. And I've just cleaned mine up a little bit to show you that this was, this is my image, and it is after a dilation of 2. But what, so obviously it's bigger, so it's an enlargement. So what if I don't want an enlargement? What if I want a reduction? So I can do the exact same thing. I can do a, come up here and say dilate from a point. Click the figure I want to dilate. I'm going to click my original figure, my point of dilation, and let's dilate this by one half. Now it gives us another figure, and let's make this figure blue. There we go. And let's measure these lengths to see if they are indeed one half of the original. So one half of three should be one and a half, which it is. Um, one half of four is two, and one half of five should give me two and a half. And again, I cleaned up uh, my figure so you could see that this was an image with a dilation of a scale factor of one half. Now, if I took uh, my line tool and I clicked on my center of dilation, you can see that all of my B's fall on that exact same line. And all of my C's fall on the exact same line. And all of my A's on the exact same line. This is how they do perspective drawings in art as well, which is one way that we use dilations. Okay, now I'm going to undo these and I'm going to ask you to pause your video and you try to create a dot. Uh, dilation of this original figure by a scale factor of 4. So pause your video and try that. 
Now hopefully yours looks something like this. So let's go up here and zoom out. Grab our zoom out tool. And then if you hold down shift and move your whole screen, and zoom in a little bit. Come on, give me the zoomer. There we go. Yours should look something like that. Okay, and also check to just make sure. Now, if you in uh, large by a scale factor of four, I would say that if your original one was three, four times three is 12, so let's check A, B, and see if it's 12. Yes, it is. And four times four is 16, so this side should be 16. And four times five is 20, so this side should be 20. Let's see if that is. And it is. Awesome. So now, quite honestly, you're probably way better at this than I am because you're used to using online tools. <clears throat> so play along with, around with this. One of the things I'll ask you in the teacher talk is to actually create a figure and create a dilation in GeoGebra and show it to me. All right. I think you are ready to do your assignment.